Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of Discover Islam. We are very happy and delighted today to have with us again Professor Anna Marie Schimmel from Germany. Uh, welcome, Professor Schimmel. And Professor Schimmel is a world renowned scholar of Islamic studies and a well written author, lecturer, professor in many universities. Uh, professor Schimmel, today we have a subject, maybe it's one of your favorites, to discuss something about Sufism. So can you give us a little bit of background about Sufism and why it is the most popular literature in the West? The background of Sufism is really an early ascetic movement which originated in, uh, in Iraq, particularly in the city of Basra, where the stern preacher Hassan al-Basri Basra was working. And uh, then it, as I said, it was an ascetic movement, and then the idea of pure love of God was introduced uh, introduced by a woman, by Rabia al-Basriya, who died in 801, and uh, she really told her compatriots and co-religionists uh, that the thing that mattered more than anything else is to love God for his own sake and not because one fears of hell or one hopes for paradise. And uh, this gave rise uh, to the development uh, of the concept of love of God and to Sufism at large. Sufism is called like that because the first ascetics were wearing garments of Suf, of wool, so it's, it's basically the ascetic garment. And during the case of the ninth century, Sufis developed in both uh, Iraq and in what is now Syria and also in Egypt. Many of them were still strict ascetics, uh, but the idea of love of God was disputed by some of the orthodox scholars who did not allow that God should be loved in a human sense, but one should love the, the orders, the commands of God. And in, the first, in early Sufism, there was a very negative attitude toward the world. It's a typical ascetic attitude as we know it also in Christianity and in Buddhism. But there was one of the Sufis in uh, Egypt, Zunun al-Misri, died in 859, who uh, heard the praise of God from everything, just as the Quran says that God created everything, only that they may praise him and, uh, and worship him. And uh, Zunun heard this praise of God in every stone, in every uh, tree, everywhere. And I think uh, this idea that one has to listen to the praise of God all over nature is one of the very important features of Sufism, and you find it in Sufi uh, stories all through the centuries, be it in Iran, be it in Turkey. And uh, slowly, the concentration of the Sufis uh, was focused on on Tawheed, on the concept of divine unity, and they went so far as to say, uh, of course, there is uh, la ilaha illallah, there is no deity save God, uh, but they even claim that he is the only one who is acting, which every Muslim can accept, he is the only one who has real existence. And at this point, the story of later Sufism begins. If God is the only one who has existence, what is the world? What are the human beings? And uh, the, some of the early Sufis in Baghdad went so far as to say, no one can profess that God is one but God alone. He speaks through the human being and makes the human beings confess that there is no real existent being but he. So you mean it developed from a practical aspect of zuhud and asceticism yes. to a philosophical to, to a philosophical concept, concept, which is the tasawwuf al-falsafi. Yes, yeah. uh, but in Iraq uh, and uh, Egypt in the 9th and 10th century, it was really not philosophy, it was not philosophical, it was still much more practical. And uh, the great uh, representative of uh, the love of God to its extreme was al-Halaj, who was... Uh, persecuted and was killed in 922, and he became the 
martyr of divine love, as they call him, he had said, Ana al-Haq, I am the creative truth, that is, I am God, I am part of God. This was not said as a legend, he wrote it in one of his books, the Kitab al-Tawasin, and uh, it was not only his alleged heresy that brought his execution about, but it was also the fact that he was active in political and social uh, purposes, which did not. But why, you know, the, the Western fascination, like for example, you mentioned Al-Hallaj, the most voluminous work is by Masin Yun right. about him. So why they are interested? They are interested because they see in Sufism uh, something in which love, love of God is a central, the pivotal role and not so much the Sharia which basically is not correct because a good Sufi uh, should follow the Sharia uh, to all its details. Mm -hmm. In later times when Sufism came to Iran, around it the poetry of the Persians and people under their influence developed and this poetry is a really wonderful loving poetry which can attract a non-Muslim reader very easily. But the great problem with Sufism is that in the 12th century, 13th century, a figure like Ibn al-Arabi appears who developed the idea of Wahdat al-Wujud, the unity of being. This is a term which he himself has never used, uh, but his interpreters did it. He created an enormous system uh, of uh, what I wouldn't call mysticism, but I would call it theosophy, a philosophical approach. And uh, he influenced the following generation to our days tremendously, although I think that he was, uh, I would be doubtful about his, not about his genuinity, he was certainly a genuine uh, thinker, uh, but uh, sometimes his uh, theories have uh, influenced the later Sufis to such an extent uh, that some of them were re removed from the Islamic basis quite a bit. And Ibn al-Arabi was a very thorough follower of the Sharia. He belonged to the Zahiri Mazhab. And this is very strange. In fiqh, he is Zahiri. Yes. But in the Aqidah, he is Batini. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he is, for me, Ibn al-Arabi is a very interesting thinker. But uh, I mean, a book like his Fusus al hikam uh, I find it extremely difficult to understand and I have been working on Sufism all my life long, and yet I, I don't find access to him. I yeah. go to my Persian poets yeah. who... Quote him. Quote, yeah, and I mean, from their poetry you really feel an extreme love of God, a love of beauty, and when I go to Rumi, I think Rumi is the best interpreter of the Quranic ayah that God shows his sign, because he sees uh, the signs of God in everything, from an ant uh, to the stars and the sun, and everything he sees in life it points to him, it points to the unity of God and to the love of God, and I think that's why I like this Rumi question so of. Much. Uh, this question of some of the excesses that you have mentioned yes. about Sufism. I think maybe this is one of the reasons why many modern mm. Muslims today feel that Sufism is not the real Islam. Yes. Because uh, there have been many excesses throughout the ages. So I think there are people on the two far edges, those who deny it at all and yes. those who, who are complete. deeply, completely... Yes.